Let me share a little bit about my background before we get started. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate, a boutique real estate firm that is home to over 30 real estate sales and marketing consultants who service home buyers and home sellers throughout Boston, the South Shore, the South Coast, and Cape Cod. Our firm takes pride in assisting our clients in the next chapter of their lives by taking a holistic approach to their Sound real estate good? endeavors. Good? We believe good? that every move Everybody should be free. a moving experience. Every week, my real estate team member, Mary Baker, and I, yeah, along I with tell. the director of Boston Connect Real Estate, <laughs> Melissa Wallace, provide you with our unique marketing it's literally approach the same to selling as you're homes doing and share with, with you our expertise yep, right? in navigating the home really buying process. Already breaking the rules. We like to yep, mix yep. it up sometimes, so not only will you hear our perspective on real estate topics, but you will hear the expert thoughts and opinions of some of our real estate agents at Boston Connect Real Estate and the preferred professionals that we trust. Be part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me and my team or one of the dedicated agents at Boston Connect Real Estate to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with us at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now, sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And good morning to all my South Shore friends out there, neighbors. This is Sharon McNamara. You are, of course, listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. We are here in our in-home studio at Boston Connect Real Estate. Of course, the host of our radio show here, Talk Real Estate Roundtable, as well as the McNamara Broker team with Mary Baker, who is out doing some open houses today, and Melissa Wallace, who feels, I feel a little naked today. I feel like I'm on Naked and Afraid because my sidekick is not with me. Uh, but we're fully dressed, by the way. Right. <laughs> yes. yes. And to prove that, you could also not only listen to us on WATD here, uh, you can watch us on Facebook. You can go to Boston Connect's website, um, not our website, but our Facebook page, and you can see us live with my guest today. And, of course, I have Tim in studio. Hey, Tim, how are you? Good, good morning. Uh, do you need me to send over um, any bugs or anything to, uh, to, to, to feed on? Well, the one item I brought, if I was to bring one item, I, I, Mark and I sometimes fall upon this show, and I was like, what would be the one item you would bring? And I would be like, I'm guessing you can't bring clothes. No. No. no, 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 naked and Definitely afraid. Not. You can't bring you, clothes. You, know, you can you you can use like a bag to carry a, a weapon in and stuff, but yeah. no, no clothes. No clothes. I don't know what my one item would be like. And why do they always bring a flint? Why don't they just bring a bic lighter? Like if you can bring one thing, because what? it can run out. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. good point. Even yeah. if I brought one of those big long extra ones, yeah, flint yeah. and steel will never run out. Right. I would bring. I would mm. bring a hotel. That's what. I would <laughs> <want>. <laughs> ah. How are you going to carry that, though? That's, I don't that's, know. Oh, man. But mm. uh, that only goes to show you, first of all, I would never be naked out there anywhere. But, like, <laughs> I'm not going in the woods, period. No. No. no it's no, just no. not Absolutely me. Absolutely not. I would rather walk down Dorchester Ave in the middle of the night than walk down, like, any of these streets with no street lights. Mm -hmm. It's just. It's just as scary, probably. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It, it's not as scary in Dorchester because, like, at least there's street lights, right, around right. here? Anyways, that's just me talking to the city girl. But you've heard a couple mm-hmms and yes here. So we have a couple of guests in with me. Uh, one of them we've had with us previously, and she is, and we talk about her often on the uh, radio show, uh, full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect Real Estate. We have Emmy Flaherty with us. Hey. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. You have had such a busy week. I got to tell you. Mm -hmm. um, so you've been with our office for a, quite a bit now. And I know that one, when you switched over to us, uh, you said one of the things that you were really interested in is doing events and you love how Boston Connect really rallies around their agents in order to do those types of things. Just to tell our listeners just the two things that you did this week. Uh, so this week on Wednesday evening, we did uh, decorating cookies with Blackbird Baking Company, which is based here in Pembroke. So she provides the cookies, the frosting, and the directions, and you just put your artistic twist on it. Um, so we did that. That's always a sellout event. That was the second time I've done that. And then yesterday, myself and Kate Fisher, who's another full-time realtor here at Boston Connect, hosted Boston Children's Blood Mobile, and that was fantastic. We got... Um, everyone signed up. All the time slots were signed up for, and we had a few walk-ins. So, oh, you did have walk-ins. That's did. nice. Oh my yeah. gosh, that just gave me goosebumps through my entire body because I saw you sent me a picture in the morning, and I had had a late night. I'm st I'm on a lot of different committees now, and, and you know that are at nighttime with you know the town of Pembroke and. 
I was like, oh, I'm just going to take it a little slower this morning. And you sent me the picture and I had goosebumps. And what a great organization. And I know that I had called um, Art Edgerton, who also lives in Pembroke, and he does um, like a Pembroke News type thing. And he also makes videos for us. And mm-hmm. I asked him if he would go up there um, and do a video. And I, I watched it back this morning. And one of the things that was really interesting to me is that they don't have the opportunity to come here that often like on the south shore right right well to discuss that yeah so when i was in the bus yesterday because i also donated uh they were telling us that they don't get down this way very much Mm. uh they do go to wareham but they said that draws a lot of people on the cape so um i volunteered to um (laughs) host them you can donate every eight weeks so they're actually coming back to pembroke in may and then i think they'll be back to boston connect in august or september oh good awesome so they're coming back to the south shore area in may yes south shore realtors which is our local realtor chapter is hosting them in may so we're going to try for august or september all right that's awesome yeah and i mean what a great organization and just being able to do that i personally cannot give blood Um, And I would say that that's for two reasons. So one, I do have a Mediterranean blood disorder thing, right, that I was born with. Thank you, Dad. I didn't get the nice olive Italian skin. Um, And the other reason is I almost passed out watching the video back. Yeah. Like when I saw the bags of blood, I was like, ugh. I can't, I, I just, I'm just that person. Yeah, I, I was nervous, I won't lie, but, yeah. um, you know, I just figured that, you know, uh, a couple of my nurse friends participated. Yeah. And when you see the nurses there, it kind of resonates with you because mm-hmm. they're seeing this firsthand. Yeah. yeah. So she talked a little bit yesterday about what happens in a blood shortage, and, you know, I was oblivious to that, sort yeah. of. You know, I mean, I know they exist, but, you know. So say a couple of things, though. I'm interested. Are well, you- I mean, I said to her, you know, what happens, and she literally said people die you know they have to choose Mm -hmm. and you have to choose between two people and which one looks like they have the better chances of survival and i don't want my family to be in that situation and i don't Mm -hmm. think anybody else does so i mean our drive yesterday was for the children but obviously there's a lot of drives around so if you can muster up your courage definitely give it a shot i will say quick side note a lot of people told me they didn't do it because of the finger prick Oh, yeah, and I didn't yeah. understand that. So they prick your finger at the beginning to check your iron levels because if mm. they're too low, they're not going to take your blood because you're that's anemic. Yeah. yeah, that's me. So a lot of people don't like that. You know, one lady pointed out that, you know, that hurts more than the needle, and I don't disagree. But the other thing, too, is if you work with a computer, you know, you've got like a, you know, sore there, so to speak, for a few days before it heals. So anyways, the blood mobile yesterday for Boston Children's had this really cool machine, and you put my thumb in it, yeah, and it just kind of massaged your thumb for a while, and I really didn't know what was going on. <laughs> going on. I just kind of sat there and chatted with them. They're like, this is um, a zen thing. <laughs> I know. I was like, no, I'm really sure what's going on here. But more expert folks that have donated said, yeah, that's like the new technology. It can test your hemoglobin through, it has like a laser in it, and it can test. I oh. wish I had known that yesterday, because I would have had them test my, my blood levels and my anemia. Yeah. I mean, I just had a bunch of blood work done, but I'd be interested if it's accurate. Yeah, well, I was like, this thing can't work. You know, <laughs> like, I mean, that's yeah. I was like, they're just taking everybody's. But no, um, they sent a couple people in the afternoon back and, you know, told them to eat iron, you know, spinach, some red yeah. meat, the whole thing. So yeah. it, it works. Wow, cool. that is yeah. awesome. Well, good job. We're Thank super, you. super proud of you here. And that's one of the things as the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate, I just love seeing, you know, just the commitment to our communities that we serve and just giving back. And, you know, it's it sounds hokey when we're real estate agents out there because I feel like real estate agents have this, oh, another agent called me or how many agents do you know? But I just feel like genuinely we're motivated by helping people right. and mm-hmm. that's our end game and we just happen to help them through their real estate journeys right right so i um, super proud of you and Thank kate you. and everything that you're doing with you know doing giving back to the community going you know even everything you're doing for your clients right. you're, you're doing a super great well, job i'll just say that it's one thing to get the bus here i mean to be honest you know it's you send an email you schedule it you put it on the schedule we put it on social media but for the 40 people that signed up and took all the time slots that's what really mattered so yeah. Thank you to everyone who signed up and came yeah. and the walk-ins. You know, I, I, I was surprised yeah. that somebody pulled over off the side of the road and said, can I give my blood? So oh, that really touched me. Awesome. So oh, it was gosh. a really nice day. I wasn't expecting to feel the way that I felt. 
you know, I pulled up and was like, another event. But then you see the blood mobile and you see them taking blood mm. and you see the passion of the people working on it. Yeah. And the repeat donors, you know, mm-hmm. there were a lot of people throughout the day that came in and said they do this every eight weeks. So it was wow. a very, it was very touching. That's awesome. So I'm hoping that you and Kate will make that sort of an eight, every eight week thing if they're Definitely. not in the area. So we can do that. Mm-hmm. And I'll support you guys, as you know, in any way that Always. I can. Thank not you. Not with my blood, but, you know, any yeah. other way. <laughs> um, but it was nice, too, because I was up in my office uh, in between a couple of appointments myself. And I could hear people coming into the office and saying, wow, I love it. This is so great in here and it feels so homey. And mm-hmm. that, you know, must give you pride because it gives me pride as it I'm does. sitting up there. And I'm like, I'm so happy for them down there. I know. You well, know? I always tell everyone it's not your typical great cubicles. And and <laughs> yeah. I took a video to show that to people. So, yeah. you know, check out my Instagram. It's um, Realtor Emmy Flaherty. But there's a video on here. It's super cute in here. Yeah, that's so. awesome. Well, we also have a guest today and she has been in the office uh, previously with us. She did um, an Instagram class for all of our agents um and uh am i gonna blow it all right no so samantha steinhager yes, yes. you Beautiful. nailed it steinhager nailed yes. it uh, yes. yeah you so. just get a little guttural like kind of angry and <laughs> yes. yeah just let it go yeah. <laughs> yeah um so do you like to go by samantha or sam sam is just fine perfect i like sam for you as well um so sam not only is just very giving with her time as well she's come into boston connect real estate and has given you know, information to our agents uh, regarding Instagram, but her real role in life is uh, as a loan officer with Radius Financial Group. Do you go by loan officer, mortgage originator? What do you go by? Loan officer is just fine. Yep. All right, perfect. Why don't you tell um, our listeners, because this is your first time on the radio show with us, tell everybody a little bit about you. Sure. So thank you also so much for having me on here. Um, I've never done a radio show, and I'm sure every person's like, I knew I had a face for radio that comes on here. (laughs) (laughs) But um, just as Sharon said, my name is Samantha. I work with Radius Financial Group. Um, My office is based out of Norwell, but I am blessed to live in our beautiful town of Pembroke. So I'm right down the road here. But um, yeah, I help people buy homes day in and day out, whether they're buying or refinancing. Um, That's my role. So Mm -hmm. making sure that not only do they cross the finish line and get into the home that they'd like, but also that they feel empowered and educated through that experience. So that's um that's what I do. That's awesome. And I know that you're on a great team over yep. there at Radius uh, with Bob Malone yep. and his whole team. So uh, a lot of I'm sure that a lot of listeners out there know Bob Malone as well. He's been out there for a very long time and you are his sidekick. He has, you know, we've all worked with Bob. He's such he's so great and everything. But um, yeah, I'm glad we found you. <laughs> Me too. I know. A, a little a lady version. So yeah, yeah, I know. Exactly. Well, you know, I'll be honest, a lot of the loan officers that we have worked with within the past all really have been men so right you know as much as you know you there's only so much that you can and again i don't really work as a buyer's i do work as a buyer's agent my team does but mary's really the one that's giving yep. out those referrals and everything now so we're super excited to have you here um i know you did a, co- a co- uh, webinar was it yesterday or the day before um the day before yep. yes yep. so it looked like majority of boston connect agents were on there it was mm-hmm. thank you guys for <laughs> showing up it was showing out fantastic yeah so what is the topic today, ladies? Um, we did all the intros. The rest of the show is up to you. So what are what Thank is you. your main topic? Uh, well, we decided we would discuss three ways to win in this market. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, you've obviously got yourselves um, a loan officer here and a realtor. But, you know, we see the same things, but we also deal with it from different angles. So, um, you know, my biggest challenge as a realtor is dealing with, you know, kind of people having an idea of the market before they're actually out there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's because they've heard of an experience a friend had or um, something they read online, Mm -hmm. but it it is quite different. Mm -hmm. Not saying that they're wrong, but you know, they're basing that off of one experience. So we thought we would talk today about um, what the market is doing and three ways you can win in this market. And you might not want to say that people are wrong, but I'm going to say it people are wrong. Like, I I just think we've done shows on this before, not just on the loan process, but people are given misinformation. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting to me because, you know, hey, I'm one show and I'm one voice. But it it really does go back to the importance of having a team working for you, right? Mm -hmm. So, Emmy, when you're working with your buyer clients, you're sitting with them and you're educating them and you're having a consultation with them so they know how to get from, you need to know where you are in order to get to where you're going. And I am always floored by the fallacies that people believe. So right. I'll say it. Yeah. They're wrong. I mean, so today's their lucky day. I mean, I kind of see this in Sam too, but I'm an optimistic person. So if you come to me and say, I want to buy a house, 
I'm, g- I'm going to make that happen yeah, for you. Right. You mm-hmm. know, it might not be tomorrow. Maybe you have to work on your credit. Maybe there's a few things you have to do. But in this market, there's a lot of options out there for you. So mm-hmm. obviously, I'm not going to say, oh, no, don't buy in this market. You right. know, yeah. that's right. Oh, the news told me to tell you that it's a bad time to buy. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I'm optimistic. I'm going to make that happen for you. Am I going to put you in a house that you can't afford? Absolutely not. Mm-mm. But there are so many options out there right now. So mm-hmm. that's what we're here to talk about. And too, I think that um, one of the things that people are afraid of is what the interest rates are doing and all that and I just I this show is about you but I have to tell you a very really good story from yesterday I had a client that I help sell buy a house with 17 years ago okay Mm first-time home buyers and uh, they are adorable I love them so they're finally think they love their home they're finally thinking about maybe selling that and buying something else while I'm doing my consultation with them you know I'm not in there saying okay we're gonna get this on the market we're gonna get it sold you're gonna get into this you can afford that you can do this I was like hey have you thought about maybe using this as an investment property rather Mm -hmm. than selling it have you thought and then we talked through that and they're like oh I don't know we love our house so much like I don't know that I would like to see somebody else in it and maybe not loving it as much as we do and I said okay have you thought about maybe keeping this house not buying another house by the water and maybe buying a cottage like you know what I mean like I'm thinking of things and trying that's what the whole thing the whole plan is is this financial plan but my point of talking to them one was what I loved is he said and I should have got this on video Sharon there hasn't been a day that we have lived in this house that we have regretted purchasing it oh I love that it was so sweet and then second they said and it's a small little house they have their son now who's like 10 The second thing that they said that I love that was interesting to me was he goes, you know, we were really, you know, at that time, 17 years ago, it's like we were like penny pinching. Like we were like and my he goes, I remember my interest rate was seven point four percent. Wow. So let's discuss that. That. Yep. Right. 17 years ago, people were buying houses, first time home buyers, small little house in Norwell. And that was his interest rate. And never did they regret a day in their home. Ever. Ever. And, or let the interest rate dictate the happiness Honest that they felt in their home. I, I literally want to call Fox 25 News and ask them to do like just like a whole broadcast so on cute. them. <laughs> I know, that's so. so cute. So that's what I want. I thought that that would be a good segue for you guys because I know everybody's worried about the interest rates. Right. So you guys go. Take your topics. Sure. So, I mean, as we break down the three ways to win in today's market, the first one we said was be prepared and being prepared in regards to your interest rate, in regards to if you have a property to sell, just as you said, in asking, you know, what should I do with this property? Maybe I don't need to sell it. Maybe it would be a great investment for me. Maybe the plan that I had in my mind isn't exactly what what I need at the end of the day. And that's why being prepared instead of waiting until the last minute waiting until you view the house of your dreams on a weekend and then having an absolute fire drill in order to make Mm -hmm. this dream come true. It's just, it's not good for you. It's not good for your team. Mm -hmm. And there ultimately could be a lot of regret in doing that. So we said be prepared because it comes with a couple of caveats too and and, and exactly what being prepared means. Um, Emmy, I know that for you, I'm sure everyone comes to you first because they're so excited. <laughs> they want to talk about the mud rooms and the the beautiful backyard with the pool and all of the things. But it's more than just that, you know, and you help people see through kind of the the nitty gritty of what that would mean for them to do that. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, they'll come to me and say, hey, I saw this house and I want to go see it. And obviously my answer is yes, when? But the other thing, too, is, you know, you've got to work with an experienced officer, especially loan officer, especially in this market, because if we have to act fast, you need somebody who knows how to do that right? Um, and do it to their best. So that's where Sam comes in. But um, I get that a lot. I get a lot of people, hey, I saw this house and I want to go see it. And that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as our steps to win in this market is you definitely want to then kick off a conversation if you haven't already with the loan officer. Um, you know, because going into a home without a pre-approval these days, you can see it for sure. Mm-hmm. But if you want to put an offer on it, um, you know, you need that piece of paper, which is the pre-approval. Mm-hmm. Right. And I always suggest to clients as well is that having that pre-approval, you really should. Yeah, you can pop into open houses and things like that. Obviously, there's other conversations about, you know, giving your agent's name. So make sure you say, I'm working with Emmy and don't give any information. You just started your search. But I think, too, people make the mistake of going online and maybe looking at some of these calculators and saying, oh, I 
can see that I can afford X, Y, and Z, where that might not be true. So mm-hmm. I think a big mistake people will make is thinking they can afford a certain amount in one way or another. It could be too high or it could be too low. But if it's too high and you're going into these homes, you are always going to be disappointed at what you can really afford. And one of the things that you said, Sam, too, was about the emotional aspect of doing this. Being prepared is so much better because I know for sure at the height of our emotion is when we are at the bottom of our, you know, just logic. Mm -hmm. And you're making decisions based on emotion. And that is the worst time to make, you know, any of these decisions. That's why I think sitting down, you sit down with all your buyer clients beforehand, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because you got to talk it over. You know, people think, oh, I see something online and I go and get it. You know, you might do that on Amazon, but you know, you I, I don't recommend you do that for the house. And I'll be honest, there is, um, you know, we have an agenda and in the agenda, we had had this talk this week. Sometimes the first house is the house. Right. OK, yep. so, yes, that can happen. But, um, you know, there's so much more to this that you need to think about. So we like to sit down with our buyers here first and. You know, we have a conversation. There's a checklist. You know, what are you looking for? Because we're trying to guide you as best as possible. But like Sharon said, you know, you need to know the budget you're working with. You wouldn't go out and shop for Lamborghinis. So, Mm. you know, you just have to figure out what is within your budget. And a really good loan officer like Sam is going to give you, okay, you know, if you're interested in X property in Pembroke, you know, here's what you can expect based on your numbers to pay Mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. You know, Mm -hmm. that's very helpful information to have going into the home. Mm -hmm. Would I want to pay, you know, $2,500 a month for this? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I would, but, oh, you know, it doesn't have the farmer's sink that I wanted or it Mm -hmm. doesn't have the mudroom that Sam mentioned. So maybe I wouldn't pay $2,500 for this. So it really Mm -hmm. helps going in with these numbers, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. And Sam, what is the process? Do you want to talk about that? I mean, what is that process? process if somebody is interested in finding out what they can afford. Yep. So, I mean, you'll hear the the words all the time, pre-approval, pre-approval, the pre-approval process, but it's exactly what it is and that it's an exercise. You know, it's an exercise in finding out what you can afford and how much do you want to afford. So more often than not, I'll take the, the monthly payment. So where do you want to see yourselves from a monthly standpoint? All in. Let's talk about what you want to spend for your mortgage including your taxes, including your insurance, and whether that's a range or this is the top of my budget. And then let me work backwards from there in getting to your purchase price, looking at what you want to spend on a down payment, and then taking those numbers to find what makes most sense for you. Because ultimately, there's definitely a difference in between between what you can qualify for and what you can afford. Right. So I don't want to give you numbers that you don't care about. I ultimately want to help you find those figures that, that is the information you're looking for. And, you know, what I do with a lot of the clients that I work with is I know for me, having a tangible example definitely helps in, all right, so this home would cost me this. And instead of going on those online calculators where those numbers aren't your numbers, I have your numbers now. Let me send me the address and I'll go through and I can tell you exactly what the monthly payment would look like for you and what the initial investment would look like for you. And then ultimately, it's your decision what you do with that. And we can do that once. We can do it 100 times over. But I'm happy to do it because that's the best way to give you the information you're looking for and set your expectations correctly. One thing I want to discuss, too, is the importance of not sort of jumping. And that again, when people get into this emotionally, you know, once you get your offer accepted or even beforehand, it's like getting a pre-approval from this person, that person, the other person. We want to talk about that. But it looks like somebody on uh, Facebook is watching you right now. And it looks like you say his name, Jurg. Yeah, that's Theo. my husband. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there we go. He may know you. So uh, many people feel it's not a good time to buy right now. What advice would you give someone who would love to own a home but maybe maybe thinks it's a bad time to buy? I also want to give uh, the phone number, too, for the studio, 781-837-4900, 781 If you have any questions for my guest today uh, regarding real estate, uh, please give us a call. Tim will. Uh, Tim is at studio at WATD. We're in our in-home studio here at Boston Connect Real Estate. Uh, he'll pipe you right through, and you can ask your question, or you can go on to uh, Boston Connect Real Estate on Facebook and ask your questions there. So why don't you answer hubby there? Nice to meet you, hubby. (laughs) Do you want to answer hubby or do you want me to? He hears me talk. I was going to say, you probably give him a lot of advice. Um, So great question. My question back is, um, you know, why do you think it's a bad time to buy? Mm -hmm. Um, And then I would, 
you know, give you feedback. Yeah, what what based is on that? that? What are people saying? Like, you know, we hear people saying it all the time. Oh, I heard it's a bad time to buy. I, I'm going to be honest. On my team, we have Evis uh, Mason is one of my team members with myself and Mary. And last year, that dream program, what mm-hmm. was that dream? Mass Dreams. Mass Dreams. Part of the Mass Dream program got a really good price on this house. We were able to get them something under agreement before it went on the market. Somebody at work told them this is a terrible time to buy. They got cold feet and walked away. They ended up ultimately, we figured it out because the house then went on the market, sold for like $40,000 more, and they lost that dream program. So they lost about $100,000. Crazy. I know. Because somebody at work who is, you know, an IT specialist or whatever told them it's not a good time. Where is it coming from? It's the rates. But the thing is, so like you just said, these folks from 17 years ago, they bought in at 7%. If you go out and look, and Sam can attest more to this, but if you go out and look at the rates, they're not like, they're bad compared to two years ago, Mm -hmm. bad in the sense that they've gone up. But these are not, you know, like 18% rates. I know in the early 80s, they were in the 18s. um, Because, Mm -hmm. you know, aging myself, but was born in 1982. And you know, you always get the facts for the years you were born. They were 18%. So I'm kind of curious as to why now isn't a good time. Does it mean like, you know, that your interest rate is higher than your friends who bought two years ago? Mm -hmm. Yes, but that doesn't necessarily make it a bad time to buy. Mm -hmm. So um, Melissa says this all the time. The best time to buy is when you're ready to buy. And you know what? Those numbers that and I all I always wonder about this, Sam, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think if whoever the people are that make those decisions on lowering the rates, if they could have looked ahead and saw what it is actually doing. So if people have that like lock in phobia right now that they don't want to sell based on what their rate is right now. Do you think they would have done it the same way? Because I'm not sure that that was the best thing to do. I think maybe they should have changed it. Like if you were purchasing a new home, but not for a refi. So, I mean, there's this could be a, an hours and hours and hours long conversation, but... We'll just bump the next yeah, show. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, ultimately, you know, they the Fed may have started, wanted to have started raising rates back in 2018, 2019, mm-hmm. you know, incrementally versus, you know, and obviously no one could predict a pandemic. I yeah. totally understand that. But instead of this, you know, whiplash that everybody's feeling and... Also, the media did a lot of this to us, too. So if the media perhaps hadn't harped on these historically low interest rates, historically low, historically low, yeah. then now the, they're doing the exact opposite in kind of creating that fear-based economy, if you will, where people are scared because they think it's a bad time to buy. Mm-hmm. Now, and just like Melissa says, like, it's a it's the right time when it's right for you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when it comes to and I, I think about this all the time is like if you can afford the payment right now, yes, that interest rate isn't three percent. Mm-hmm. I, I trust me, I know too. Um, as one who has a three percent interest rate, I'm thrilled, but not for one second would that let me dictate whether or not I need to make a huge decision for my family, if I need to relocate because of a job, if I am just not happy in my home. And mm-hmm. the statistic just came out in January where um, was it eighty percent or seventy five percent of home buyers who purchased within twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one regret their home purchase, mm-hmm. and they let interest rates. And the rat race and the media dictate a lot of their decisions. And just think of that. Like, we have people who don't want to sell now who are in a home that they hate strictly because the either the media says that they shouldn't or because the IT guy at work said mm-hmm. that they shouldn't. Right. Mm-hmm. When that's not necessarily true. But one other thing is, if you're a renter right now, your interest rate's 100%. Right. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Like, I, I, you know, like. Hello. I mean, Mm -hmm. 7% is scary to you, so you won't buy in this market. But you're going to take this lump sum every month, just hand it over to your landlord to pay their mortgage. That Mm -hmm. that, that to me, just looking at numbers, 7% interest to to buy a home that I'm going to gain equity in over time. Or I'll just give 100% interest to my landlord. And I think it always goes back to, too, like getting into a payment that you're comfortable with. So... This is this was another thing. We did this one exercise one time at one of our roundtables that we were discussing this is 
Okay, so in the past couple of years, we've had low inventory. We're starting to see this happen already again, right? Mm -hmm. So a house is on the market for 500, and in order to get that house, a person is paying $600,000. So you just paid $100,000 more for a a valued house of $500,000. But yet you don't wanna pay $500,000 for a $500,000 house at six point, mm-hmm. what, what is the six point, and I know it matters, but like six and a half percent? Um, higher. Seven? Yeah, we'll oh, say seven. Seven? seven. Okay, yeah. so a seven percent mortgage, it doesn't make sense to me. Right. So look at that, it is in the sevens, literally where we were 17 years ago. Right, right. And they've loved their home every day for 17 years. No right. regrets whatsoever. I mean, I can tell you when I rented, I had nice landlords, but I didn't like the people next to me. I didn't like the people above me. I didn't like the people below me. And I'm not antisocial. These two can attest to that. It's just, you know, mm-hmm. if if I'm I'm a morning person. So if if people are loud and banging on stuff at night, I'm, I'm they're not, you know, my ideal neighbor. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I could go on and on about that, but I would much rather be putting my money towards a house. Mm-hmm. Right. And your house is it's an asset. Ultimately, of course, it's something you live in. We need housing but it's yours to leverage so it's yours should you you know need to i don't know take cash out to pay off some monster credit cards down the line it's yours if your daughter decides to go to a college that you did not budget for you know mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. also yours to refinance down the road too so mm-hmm. it's your asset it's kind of like a bank that you now have at your disposal and when you're renting you don't have that bank mm-hmm. no And don't you think it's important to not look at, I don't know, I'm I'm just a person that always stays in my own lane regardless of anything, right, with business, personal, whatever. But, like, I don't know why people are continuously comparing themselves to other people when it's their life decision, you know? Right. You know what I mean? Like, I have to have this big, you know, four-bedroom colonial because that's what, you know, so-and-so has. Well, if, if you can't afford, like, why do that? You know what I mean? I just I just don't understand it. I don't get that. I mean, yeah. I, you know, it's like the keeping up with the Joneses. But I think, you know, we're at a point now, especially with social media, that, mm. you know, there's a lot of people out there that are buying smaller and yeah. making smarter investments. You know, you maybe can afford a Lexus, but you're driving a Camry. Like, mm-hmm. those people are out there. And if you're listening to this, this does, you know, there's opportunity out there. And our three points today, you know, the first one was to obviously be prepared. But the second one is to trust your gut. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think one of the key things with trusting your gut is if you're out there working with someone that, you know, hasn't encouraged you to do a pre-approval or, you know, I'm taking someone out after the show today to look at some properties and her lease is up in June. So she's feeling a little pressured because the lease is coming up on renewal and she doesn't want to. Um, you know, we've talked about what each one of these properties is going to cost her on a monthly basis, because if you're going in there, you know, I say to her, you know, okay, according to the numbers, this one's going to cost you about 2700 a month. Would you be comfortable with paying 2700 a month for this? Or we go into the next one and it's okay, this one's 2500 a month. So basically, you know, you're able to go in prepared to these properties. But if you don't have that information or you haven't done a pre-approval or you haven't talked to someone, then um, I, I wouldn't consider you prepared. And I think that you would want to reach out to Sam or I, you know, to help you, you know, the best that we can with that because I would certainly want to know. I think we have a phone call. We do. It, yes, we do. T- we have Simon in Plymouth. Oh, hi, Simon, Simon. in Plymouth. <laughs> hey, good morning, ladies. How are you? We're Doing good. Well. Hey, I'm interested in um, finding out some information for my daughter and her uh, boyfriend. He's in the military, and uh, they're looking at first-time buying, right? So what do you know about VA loans, how to get them, and what's, what's the best uh, – process to go through working with banks and whatnot to get those types of mortgages? Uh, Well, first of all, thank him for his service. Mm -hmm. I highly respect veterans and love working with them. And um, Sam can answer to the VA loan process. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to say the exact same thing. So thank him for his service for us, for sure. Um, To be completely honest, the VA loan is the best loan program out there. Um, Not only is it, I I mean, it's amazing in the structure. It's amazing in what it offers for those who have served for us and, and they deserve it. So Um, That said, the VA loan does come with a few more, I guess, um, hoops to jump through on my side. So a bit more admin that needs to be done to make sure that, you know, all of the I's are dotted, T's are crossed. But it's more or less when they're out and about looking at homes, though, it's relatively similar. And that is where a lot of people 
um, both uh, on the buyer side and also on the realtor side, get a little bit nervous is that they think that the VA loan may be something different than a conventional loan. And VA appraisals, they still go by conventional guidelines. We just need a bit more information and there's a pest inspection. But other than that, too, you know, we could talk about VA loans until the cows come home, but it's truly the best loan program out there. Um, I'm a little bit biased. My boss is also a veteran of the U.S. military, so we hold those loans very close to our heart, and we take really great care of those people. Um, And it's just getting your documents together is going to be the biggest thing for them, making sure that they're prepared to do some admin, um, because everybody loves doing personal admin. But um, it's really you know, it's a great way for me to also give back to those who have served. So I love to do them. So for for you, if somebody wanted to see if they qualified or whatever the process is, how would they go about that? Just reaching out to you and then yep. and you sort of take it from there? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So they would just reach out to me and we start with a, a conversation just similar to what we're doing right now in what their goals are, what their timeline is, and of course, answering any questions that they have as they're thinking about making, um, you know, jumping on this adventure into home ownership. And then we dive into the admin piece. And then just as we were saying before, it works the same way if they're going out to view property with Emmy and they want to know what do my numbers look like for me for this house, this house, this house, I would still set them up with the same information so that they know what they're getting into. Yeah, and I would add to are that. They, are the VA loans done through conventional banks or are they done through the military or the government uh, process? How, how does that work? So there still still can be done through a mortgage banker and through a bank themselves. It's not necessarily that only one type of bank can um, close on a, a VA loan. So like, for example, at Radius, we carry the government programs as well. Government meaning um, the VA loan, so loan for veterans, USDA loan, so loan if someone is purchasing in a rural area, and then the FHA loan, um, which is you know backed by the government as well. So it doesn't, um, there isn't a only one institution that can do those there's many 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 gotcha okay all right well thank you very much for the information ladies i appreciate it thank Thank you you. thank you so much and do you want to give your phone number one more time oh sure and um if they want to reach out to me i'd be i'd love to speak with them my cell phone number is 413-441-7521 and they can feel free to call me um or text as well because it's truly goes um (coughs) right to my cell phone. (laughs) Right. And Simon, I would just add that, um, you know, once they've done that pre-approval process, that they definitely want to work with someone that's experienced with VA loans. Um, I personally do quite a few of them. And um, there are a few other things that we need to keep in mind when looking at these homes, but certainly nothing that, you know, would be scary. But just note that you would want someone that's done a decent number of VA loans to be able to guide them properly. And I'm what's, just gonna... what's the typical turnaround time for a VA loan versus a conventional loan, would you say? The loan itself or the, the pre-approval, sorry? Cause was... uh, the pre-approval process, the, you know, getting certified and, and uh, getting a mortgage solidified. So the pre-approval process itself, I mean, typically I ask for a two-day turnaround time, and that's only so, you know, I have the time to collect the documents. and But also, if I have the time available, I'd like to have my underwriter review the file And reason being is because they'll ultimately sign off on the pre-approval when one is traditionally buying a home, someone in underwriting normally doesn't look at it, look at that file until they've already had an offer accepted. But by doing it before they have an offer accepted, it's just going to show a listing agent. So if they put an offer in, the agent on the other side is going to be like, wow, not only, you know, was this buyer pre-approved, but they also already had an underwriter review all of their information and that's worth its weight in gold. So I do ask, I mean, a two day turnaround time, it doesn't have to be that long, if you will, um, but it's also teamwork. So it's also depending on how quickly I can get documentation, you know, over from your son as well. Awesome. And one of the things right. I want to add in there, too, is the importance of, you know, Emmy was saying, you know, having somebody who is experienced in working with a VA loan is really important because especially having the buyer's agent being well versed in a VA loan, because 
it's the listing agents that you sort of have to, you know, you have to overcome that obstacle and that fear and letting them know. Because for some reason or another, there became a time in our life, and I don't even know where this stemmed from, that, you know, listing agents tended to be a little worried about a VA loan versus a conventional loan. And I think it was like the 100% down that they were worried about that. And no, these are just loans. And I was talking to my daughter last night because her her boyfriend uh, is a, was a Marine for four years, and we were talking about the VA loan. But having that buyer's agent who can talk intelligently to the listing agent because we're coming up against multiple offers again, just to sort of overcome their fears is really important, too. So these are government-backed loans, though, correct? Yes. Yes. So what would the fear be? Well, listing agents sometimes, and again, some are some know and some just don't. So for me, I've always been a very strong listing agent, and I do know that. What they're worried about is they think that the appraisal process is different than a conventional. So they're worried that if there's, you know, peeling, painting, cha- uh, paint, if there's, um, do they have to, they have to sign um, an amendatory clause? Mm-hmm. So there's an amendatory clause that goes along with a VA loan, which basically says that this house has to appraise at this number, but there are definitely ways to explain that to the listing agent. Um, there does have to be a pest inspection that's done. It does not have to be pay, paid for by the uh, veteran himself or herself. Uh, a lot of people have that confused as well. Somebody else has to pay for it, but it they uh, a lot of agents think the seller is responsible to pay for that, but that is not the case. Anybody but the veteran can pay for it. The, the veteran can actually pay for it now. Oh, they can. Yep, okay, it just good. Changed. See? So Perfect. there's the the stigma being, and for a lot of people, there's that appraisal aspect, but then the benefit for a VA loan um, for many, many people is that it, there is no down payment required. However, you know, the stigma or the, re- the I guess, train of thought for, on the listing side could be, well, if this person isn't putting any money down, they don't really have any skin in the game, when that's not necessarily true. And to quote another agent who's a really good friend of mine, like, they actually, think about it, have the most skin in the game. Think mm-hmm. of what they've done in order to qualify for this VA loan. Mm-hmm. So, and again it's breaking that stigma that shouldn't be there in the first place and as sharon was saying too like it's not every agent but that's why it's super important someone like emmy is going to just lay out the facts like this is a this is a borrower who has been pre-approved they've been underwritten they have served for our country and they are set up for success and that's why they should get the offer accepted on this home Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And too, I would say for the most part, I mean, I hate to put anybody in a a class of people in any type of bubble, but wouldn't you agree with me, ladies, that probably a veteran is going to be somebody who is going to abide by sort of like the regulations and the rules. So when when Sam says, Mm -hmm. I need this paperwork, they're probably getting it, you know, where there are a lot of other people that are like, oh, did she really mean I had to get that to her? Um, So it really is that. Absolutely. And too, Sam, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, if the veteran has, you know, um, money put aside in savings in order for to get their offer accepted. They could put the initial $1,000 deposit down. They could put the initial, you know, 5% down when it came to, not that they have to, but they could if they had that extra money and then just get that money back at closing. So at least it gives the seller the idea that, okay, they have their skin in the game. But I like what you said. Certainly they have more than their skin in the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's <laughs> correct. So you can right, see there's a lot again, that goes lady. into it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to it. All right. Well, thanks for the answers. I appreciate it. Thank you for the call. Thanks, have, Simon. Have a great day today. Thanks. You thanks as well. Bye now. Bye. Fun. Well, we actually have a message from Facebook as well. Wow. So um, I have somebody, they said, I'm an investor and I have the option to get a HELOC to secure a down payment for another investment property purchase or sell a two family to purchase a three family property. What are your thoughts on which of the two are better or am I missing something else? That's loaded. That's a loaded question. (laughs) (laughs) Just give your phone number and set up an appointment. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that because you have so many different variables and options there that at the end of it all, it's just going to come down to numbers. Um, Really comparing, you know, what would you be paying for this HELOC? What's the return going to be for you? And then also the same with a potential sale. You know, what is what could you potentially net from the sale depending on when you purchase the home, how much you put into it now? Um, That is a, a 
huge opportunity for you. And there's so many exciting things that you can do with that information. And it's just, again, getting your options laid out and the numbers associated with them. Yes. So give Sam a call is the yeah. answer to Sam, that. Yeah. So Sam, give your number one more time. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, my cell phone number, it's 413-441-7521. Berkshire awesome. girl over here. Yeah. People think it's a fake number, but it's real. <laughs> you know, I've never been to the Berkshires. I've wanted to go. You're going to have to put that on your I list. Know. I'm going to have to put it on my list. Um, well, we only have 10 minutes left of the show, and I know I've been, I, yeah, so I, I'm Melissa. Uh, I am back. I'm here. Um, but I was in the other room. So. I found that opportunity, yeah, and I like know. I escaped. I, know. I was like, hello, I'm only here. I, I was just trying to tell you somebody was on Facebook. Um, so I know that we have this extensive, extensive agenda. So if there's anything that you want to sort of get in there before we talk about buyers, and Emmy, I want to give you the opportunity to talk as well. Um, and just is there anything on on here that you want to definitely pinpoint before the end of the show? Um, well, I will just say our top three items today for ways to win in this market were to be prepared, choose your team wisely, and trust your gut. And obviously, we could expand it on each topic for an hour itself. So if you have right. any questions about what Sam or I mean about that, Sam has given her number. You can reach me on mine. It is my cell phone. Uh, you can call or text 781-217-4580. Again, it's 781-217-4580. I feel like we talked, or you guys talked about being prepared, especially now with our caller, being prepared for the VA loan and everything like that. But what do you mean by team? So let's sort of dive Absolutely. into that one. So why did you think that that was like an important topic to talk about today with the team? Okay, so I have people that come to me with a pre-approval and a list of addresses. And I say to them, okay, you know, um, I appreciate that you have a pre-approval and a list of addresses, but we need to talk a little bit further about this, so we'll sit down and do the buyer consultation. But a lot of times, I mean, if you get a credit card and you know your limit's $8,000, you know to stay under $8,000, but there's so much more to it than that with houses. So again, it goes back to the analogy earlier of, you know, I like to take people into a house and say, this is exactly what you're paying every month. You know what your numbers are. I mean, yes, could you, uh, you know, come up with $4,000 a month to pay for a house? Sure. Um, oh, maybe in your situation, yes, maybe not. But either way, I like to sit down and go through the numbers. So coming back to the team, if you have somebody that just kind of gave you a piece of paper and said, I'll talk to you when you get your offer accepted, best of luck out there. To me, that is just somebody providing you a piece of paper. So to me, that's not a team member. Whoever I'm working with, when I work with buyers, I strongly encourage them to work with someone like Sam, who is going to be in the game the whole time. You know, they're not just waiting till you send them back an offer. She's saying, hey, what are you looking at? What'd you look at, you know, with Emmy? Where are your numbers at? Are you feeling a little differently now that you've looked at houses? You know, do you want to back off, you know, your, your budgeted 2700 a month? Or are you willing to maybe go up to 3000 now that you've seen some houses and seen some things? So it's more than just, you know, the piece of paper and having somebody take you house to house. It's a team, two people, loan officer and a realtor working together. Right. Yeah. And I, when we hear team, we always think like, oh, you know, I'm a real estate team. You know, we have so many teams here at Boston Connect Real Estate, but I don't, even as an individual agent, nobody in this business works alone. Right. Everybody is on a team. Mm -hmm. Every single transaction, just because you're working with a different loan officer, or you're working with a different attorney, you're on that team. You all have to work together. Right. And you're on a team with your client too. You all have to work together in order to get to the closing table. Right, and the thing is, if you're gonna enjoy this experience, you need people who care. So if someone is gonna send you a piece of paper and say, I'll see you at the closing table, or I'm sorry, I'll see you when your offer comes through, to me that comes across as like, I've got more pre-approvals to write, talk to you, and you know, whenever. Um, you know, I, I care about where my clients are at. I talk to them, you know, usually on a weekly basis. Some wanna talk daily, some talk hourly. Mm -hmm. But you know, I. We're here for you. This That's where the communication piece comes process. in for sure. Yeah. Like when talking about the team, it's a team that is there to communicate not only with you, but with each other, keeping you updated, you know, communication, especially the market is super volatile right now. I mean, interest rates went up, what, three, four weeks ago, for, uh, it, like overnight. It was quick. It was painful. Um, there were tears shed. But that said, you know, it was my job to update my pre-approved buyers to make sure that they weren't caught in the dark. Because if I just waited till an offer came through and then I gave them a surprise, you know what, your rate's actually three quarters of a point higher than where it was. 
like I don't look trustworthy and neither does the realtor who I'm working with. And same communication and aspect, you know, if I know if Emmy has things going on and she needs something from me, she can text me and she'll know I get it to her. So, you know, being having that team aspect and the communication open is really, really important. Right. And the last thing I would say is I have people that locked in before the rates went up and they're thrilled. So that goes back to team again. You know, you need an experienced loan officer who knows what they're doing and can advise you on when the best time to lock your rate is. And that's another story for another day. But mm-hmm. you can reach out to Samantha <laughs> or I or, yeah. you yeah. know, any of our social media channels to talk about rate locks if you have questions. We have some mm-hmm. creative solutions, and not to get off on it, on on the whole rate aspect and just, you know, whether it's um, we we offer a program where if and when rates fall within the next three years, Radius will refinance that person essentially for free um, on a purchase transaction. So that's really cool and should make someone feel kind of confident in that, like, yes, this payment might, might not be ideal right now, but I know that. I don't have to shell out in a year or two years when rates do decrease. Um, Same with a float down policy. So if you lock now and rates fall through the floor before you're closing, awesome. So we can go through and renegotiate and get that rate lower for you. Um, There's a lot of things like we it's no secret. Like we know rates are higher (laughs) right now and we know nobody likes that. Um, We're not exactly thrilled either. But, you know, coming up with creative solutions to mitigate that is really important to me. Yeah. And that was one of the things that I was going to bring up why I came back up to the mic is the communication aspect of it is so important because when Emmy is working with a client, she's talking to Sam and Sam saying, you know what, for this person, I think that if you use this approach, because we're up against multiple offers again, right, or this person could use some extra closing costs or, you know what I mean? So that communication is so important, especially as things are changing so quickly. So I know that uh, Melissa just gave me uh, the three minutes uh, notice there. And um, we wanted Emmy to have the chance to talk about, I know you're working with a bunch of buyers, and then just sort of a general scope of what they're looking for. We all know that Melissa's looking for something. So hey, she gets first pick. Okay. (laughs) I I have something in my pocket for Mel, so I okay. should have an update this week. <laughs> but um, I live and work, obviously, here at P- Boston Connect, so Pembroke. I have people who are dying to move into Pembroke, so I am looking for anything. I, I have people that would even take a two-bedroom at this point, but a three-bedroom or fe- four-bedroom in Pembroke. This is a first-time home for them, so we're not talking seven or 800. Um, I would love something in the threes, um, but, you know, obviously you need to meet with a realtor to discuss the list price, but three or four mm-hmm. bedroom in Pembroke, I mean, we're at a point with some of these people where they're really flexible um, as to everything else that falls into that category. But if you've been thinking about selling in Pembroke, please give me a call, 781-217-4580. Nice. Perfect. Yeah, I need a two-bedroom somewhere, <laughs> in, somewhere in Plymouth County. Something, yeah. please. Uh, so that's our two-minute bell. So, ladies, it's been wonderful having you here today. And again, as you said earlier, Sam, we could talk about some of these topics one hour each. So, uh, but unfortunately, we don't have that time today. Um, so, um, why don't you give everybody your information again and make sure you start with your names because I'm not looking at the board, so I can't say it. <laughs> sure. So my name's Samantha Steinhager. Um, you can make a game out of trying to say the last name. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to give you my cell phone number because actually, well, I'll give the email second. Um, Mm -hmm. Again, my last name's no walk in the park. So uh, my cell phone number again is 413-441-7521. So 413-441-7521. And my email is s-s-t-e-i-n-h-a-g-e at radius, R-A-D-I-U-S, G-R-P dot com. And again, I work for Radius Financial Group based out of Norwell. Awesome. And Emmy, want to give your information again one more time? Sure. So I am Realtor Emmy Flaherty. I am on Instagram as Realtor Emmy Flaherty. On Facebook as Emmy Flaherty Realtor. And I'm here at Boston Connect, 781-217-4580. And real quickly, if you are listening today and you have many more questions, Sam and I are hosting Home Buyers and Beers. Mm. Um, and that is at Stellwagen in Marshfield, Monday, April four. Um, sorry, Monday, April twenty fourth at six p.m. And we would love to have you. So pop on out and see us, and we can chat it up. 
Perfect. And if you missed any of that information, you can reach us at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Make sure you check out our past shows at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. It is a podcast as well, or you could just go to the website, talkrealestateroundtable.com. Also, you can find us on all the um, Instagram, Facebook at Boston Connect Real Estate. Thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you. Thank you. You did wonderful. Thanks, Tim. Have a great week. You too. Arrivederci. <laughs>